I'm going to do a live show, just a little chat. I found this very interesting uh, Twitter account or X account. I keep saying Twitter <clears throat> by a professor of molecular evolution from China, Shi Huang. I have no idea if I pronounced that right, of course, because I don't know about the tones in Chinese, right? And he has uh, a whole threads, many threads about the origins of us human beings. Are we really hominids out of Africa who then spread to Europe and uh, Asia? Or did something else happen? So I'll give, I'll give you the conclusions up front. This professor Shi Huang cites his own research and the research of many others, basically debunking the out of Africa theory saying that the earliest modern looking humans came from East Asia, then moved to Europe, and that uh, the African hominids, African homo sapiens arose quite independently from the Eurasians. So that yes, at some point, some 40,000 years ago or so, Africans out of Africa, modern human Africans out of uh, Central Africa or East Africa did come to Europe but died out there. They left no trace among, say, modern modern Europeans or modern uh, East Asians and so on. Meaning that a guy like me doesn't have modern human ancestry from East Africa and suggesting also, therefore, that the multi-regional hypothesis that the uh, 19th century European scholars came up with was probably largely correct with some modulation nowadays because new science will show that uh, Homo sapiens actually evolved mostly in East uh, East Asia. So I thought I will just go through a lot of his tweets and just talk about the things that we're not allowed to talk about, right? So hello, everybody. If you want to watch me live, I see some people joining already. My account was banned, and so I couldn't use this live uh, channel for a while. Uh, on screen, you can also see my subscribe. Uh, I have a... I have a, a Substack newsletter system and I'm trying to get a lot of paying subscribers there. Hopefully that at some point in my life, I can then live off of my subscriptions and perhaps, you know, uh, keep doing this, keep speaking out and not have to worry about, you know, other finances. Either way, um, oh, let me, I need to check my scenes here. So I'll disable this for a moment. Right, so I'm going to talk about uh, the forbidden topics. Like I said, I was I was banned on this channel, and now I'm trying to get back to see if people are finding me again or not. Um, it's always so frustrating to deal with the TikTok censorship because recently the European Digital ID Act, I don't know, I think that's what it's called, right? The European Digital ID Act, something like that, has now been enacted on Twitter and I had my, uh, sorry, on TikTok, and I had my first video taken down because it, uh, uh, some law in Sweden, which doesn't even apply to me because I don't live in Sweden, some law in Sweden said that my content was illegal there and the video was taken down. Uh, it's just truly insane. So, uh, I'm just going to go through uh, some of the information that uh, Professor Shi Huang came up with. Um, and uh, let me think. I'm going to post this video also to YouTube. I assume YouTube will. YouTube censorship can be very strict surrounding, say, hot topics like the lockdown era 2019 to 2022. You, you still can't talk about that. I still can't use the C word out loud and say things about it like da 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 wasn't real i can't say it because youtube will still take those videos down it's just absolutely absurd so professor shi huang uh, professor of molecular uh, evolution he's on uh, I, I suppose he lives in california usa okay he's not from china but he is chinese and he has a totally different theory about uh, the origins of human origins of humanity uh, for example um he, he comes up with his own theory that he calls the maximum genetic diversity theory. Um, so remember, well, you must have heard Africans say that, or anybody say that uh, Africans have, as a group, have the largest or the greatest genetic diversity amongst themselves, more than Europeans have amongst themselves and more than East Asians have among themselves. Now, we have been so programmed to believe that um, diversity is a strength. But Shi Huang here, Professor Shi Huang says, no, it's not. <laughs> because um, 
let me try to capture what he, he's trying to explain. Uh, if you have too much diversity, it becomes an inefficient thing. If you have too much diversity, meaning you uh, have so many um, things going wrong at the molecular levels of your genes and so on, that you have less optimized brains. And so um, genetic specialization by becoming a bit less diverse, such as the Europeans have become a bit less diverse than the Africans and Asians have also become a bit less diverse than the Africans. And that kind of specialization by reducing your diversity, uh, which is evidence of specialization in some way, uh, is actually correlated to having better functioning brains, higher cognitive ability, greater intelligence. So no, diversity isn't a strength because this natural diversity that you see in, in Africa becomes a liability. It starts to harm your, uh, your cognitive ability due to the all sorts of weird mutations and recombinations that you have amongst your peoples, right? Causes trouble. So... All right. All right. I'm going to try to also read your comments, you know. All right. All right. Let's do this. So, so yeah, I suppose uh, when I write something that the AI removes on live, it will restrict the viewership. Viewership. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, I can't do anything about that. I've set the, uh, I have this moderation tool. I, I activated it. So I assume TikTok will just take that out. Right. All right. Right, right. Thoughts on NATO. Uh, well, I'll talk about that another time. Uh, China, in the meantime, has become a scientific superpower. And the Chinese students, they don't look up to the West anymore. Nobody looks up to Germany anymore. Remember, like, 20 years ago, Germany, German technology was like, wow, right? It was something you looked up to. And this doesn't exist anymore. It just disappeared in 20 years' time. Uh, here, so... I'm going to start reading a bunch of his tweets, right? So, so then you understand what I'm doing here. Is that neural stem cells in modern humans have a longer metaphase and fewer chromosome errors compared with Neanderthals and chimpanzees. This supports that maximum genetic uh, diversity theory that I just mentioned, meaning there's less random error in the genome and therefore you have a better brain. So, so if you have too much genetic diversity in your group, this is about group level diversity, right? Too much genetic diversity in your group means you become uh, inefficient in some ways. You're less specialized and also in the brain, you're less specialized. So the higher cognitive ability arises from a bit more homogenous groups of people. That's not to say that we're doing inbreeding, of course, that's nonsense. Uh, it's all about uh, having the right measure of things like drinking water. Drinking water is good for you, but not gallons a day, right? Then it's bad for you, right? If you drink too much water, you're going to flush out the salt in your blood, basically. Uh, if you can even pee that fast, right? Or if you can, can blow up your bladder. So, so that's how it is. It's all about having the right measure of things. Oh, you just read the article I sent out. Okay, great. All right. All right. Uh, uh, he reposted something as well. Like, left-leaning students have worse mental health than moderate and conservative students. Hmm. That's interesting, right? Why would that be always? Uh, I, I think it has something to do with the values. If you have more solid values to rely on, then even if your environment is poor, you can still deal with that. Like someone, someone who falls into the water, if you can't swim, you're going to panic. But if you fall into water, but you can swim, then you're going to be fine, right? In most cases. Right. So inventing falsehoods is easy and therefore they are easy to vary once found. Discovering the right explanations is hard, but the harder they are to find, the harder they are also to debunk. Um, let's talk a little bit about the leftist scientific mindset. Uh, because it comes into play, you, you need to be aware of this. And if you didn't know, a lot of leftists assume that the entire reality is a mind but that mind is basically the collective human mind and that just humans alone can rethink this reality. And so many leftists have lost their interest in caring about reality. They don't really care to know about what is the objective reality at all. 
They simply want to impose their ideological goodness onto it. So, for example, if there are racial differences that we observe in the real world, leftists will deny these and saying it is immoral to believe in racial differences. Therefore, we must deny the existence of racial differences. Whereas other people, so it comes down to what do you start with? Do you start with your ideology and you want to impose it onto the reality, which is what leftist scientists often do nowadays? Or do you start with the reality, all right, and let observations inform your ideology, which is what many other people tend to do, all right? Yeah, Africans as a group are more genetically diverse than Europeans, for example, among themselves, right? But it turns out that this has negative effects. Uh, it causes more errors in your genome, uh, and that causes more trouble in the formation of your brain, for example. All right. All right. Uh, what do I think of Georgia Maloney and Marine Le Pen? I think both of them are controlled opposition, so they're not going to do anything good for Europe. Not not on the big scheme of things. All right. It's not me who thinks they are more diverse. They are more diverse. This has been, you know, established by science, you know. So here's another interesting tweet by Donald Hoffman. It's like, for any theory that claims conscious experience emerges from physical processes, ask what specific conscious experience does your theory explain? The taste of mint? <laughs> the smell of garlic? No hand waves. Right? Give an account, and the accounts aren't given. Yeah, that's pretty good. So Professor Shi Wang, the molecular scientist that I, whose tweets I'm reading, he uh, talks a lot about his, uh, his concept, what's, what he calls uh, neutral theory as opposed to uh, you know, the out of Africa theory and so on. Uh, but let's see if I can come up with some... Uh... So people in general, of course, have long started doubting and have long doubted the out of Africa theory because it is so highly political. So let's let's backtrack a little bit and, and ask ourselves, why do we have to believe that modern humans came out of Africa? Because by allowing them to come out of East Africa, you create a location where you can say we're all from that place. We're all from Africa. Right. Uh, and that is fuel for the universalist belief system. Universalism seems to be precisely this leftist uh, self-delusion, I would say, the belief that we are all equal, there's only one human race, uh, and what differences there are are just purely visual, and that's it. And that means any form of difference you do find in the real world, in the economy, for example, must be discrimination, must be because of white supremacy or something, right? And that creates a very awkward situation where a lot of the differences that we find in the economy are not caused by oppression at all. Right. It's not caused by oppression, but imagine this. Imagine you're a leftist and you want to feel morally superior because you refuse to believe in racial differences. And then when you see different outcomes among different races in the economy, then you assume it must be discrimination and you point at white men. How are you still morally superior when you do that? You're not. When most of the so-called differences are that you observe are not caused by oppression. Right? then you're not morally superior. You're not on the moral high ground. You are a pathetic weasel, really. Um, but why do we have to believe then that Africans came out of, your, um, out of East Africa? You humans came out of East Africa. It's because you can create the fiction of a universal humankind. And this may have all sorts of moral, liberal, fantastical motivations, but that doesn't make it true. Wanting something badly also doesn't make it true. So let me even add, let's backtrack all the way to the big picture. I just told you that leftists see the whole reality as mental in origin, as purely psychological, and therefore believing in what is morally right, therefore somehow manifests into reality. But I have a small modulation here, and it may be not what leftists want to hear, is that I also personally believe that the universe we live in has a mental origin. So the physical universe, the table here and the computer and so on, and my microphone, that's physical, but it has a mental origin. But that doesn't mean I am the progenitor or I am the cause of this physical world. I'm not. The, the physical world may be one big mind or many big minds working together in some way, right? 
uh, and I am just another mind. And although I can influence this reality, it doesn't mean I can override it entirely and play God. I can't play God. I am not a God mind. I am merely one man. I think a lot of these academic leftists, the intellectuals, they do feel as though they are God. They want, or at least they want to play God, right? And that is, that is, that leads them down the rabbit hole where they think they must be right because they are morally right. Whereas they're not right, they're just wrong. They may still be morally, morally good people, but they're just wrong about the facts and the reality. And if you refuse to accept that, that the way we perceive the reality out there doesn't necessarily mean that we caused it, right? So I can go very far into this. Martin Heidegger wrote about this at some point in his later, later years where he believes that uh, there's only imaginations, the ones in your head, and perceptions, the ones that you perceive, like, for example, the images you see. Uh, you can go into phenomenology. That's what Heidegger was all about. Um, but the thing is here, just because, and I, I will even accept that everything is imagination and perception, but that doesn't mean that I alone can change, change what I perceive as the physical reality. I can deal with it. I can work with it. Uh, I can't change an orange into an apple, but I can plant seeds for an orange tree. I can't change the wall in front of me unless I break it down, right? And which is hard work. I may need a shovel or something. I may need a bulldozer to destroy the wall in front of me, right? So we can influence the reality, but there's no way that I see that human beings, even working together, we can somehow impose our ideological moral high ground onto this reality and make everybody live the way we want them to live. That is the totalitarian mindset of the Soviet communists and of the modern American leftists. It is horrible. It's a horrible mentality. All right. I see I've got some more viewers now. I've got like 26 people watching. So it's back to the old levels on. So that's great. Um, I have on my screen some tweets that I'm reading from this professor, Shi Huang. He's from California, but he is Chinese, obviously. And I was going to talk more about the differences between, uh, well, different groups of human beings. Uh, and in the meantime, I may sometimes have a little look at your uh, your comments, but I can't, res can't respond to everything. So am I an idealist? Well, in a sense, I wrote about this in my book, Eternal Struggle. If you compare the idealists versus the materialists, the idealists believe that they are animated by a God soul. And I can accept that. And the materialists, of course, deny the existence of a God and think everything is just, you know, matter in motion. Uh, I personally would modulate this a little bit and say, uh, what if there is a God, but God, but this God doesn't, isn't aware of it, that he is God. So do you have a God that lives through all, through all reality, all beings and so on? And it does animate us, but doesn't make us slaves of the God. We do have free will in this sense. So anyway, this is all highly philosophical, of course. And uh, you can disagree with that because I'm not, I'm not even so sure about it myself. So I, I enjoy uh, seeing your points of view on, on these kinds of things. All right. Uh, I don't know what solipsism is. All right, let's see if I can find some more interesting. Uh, here's here's uh, the professor is referring to research that says there's evidence that the mitochondrial DNA of modern humans may be better than that of the Neanderthals. Better replication leading to higher copy numbers. So fewer errors, I assume, as well. That's interesting. So maybe Neanderthals went extinct because their DNA wasn't working properly. Eh? Who knows? But I don't really believe in such material explanations anyway. I do believe there must be like real world social explanations. Maybe they hunted the big game to extinction. You don't know what the real reasons were. Many things could have happened altogether at the same time, of course. All right. So admixture between modern and archaic humans would lead to progenies to have more ancestral alleles, more, D, more ancestral DNA. East Asians have more derived alleles and hence a higher probability to match the derived alleles of Neanderthals according to, okay, very complicated stuff. 
I'm trying to make sense of a lot of things here as well, you know, in the meantime. Uh, all right. Therefore, even without admixture, meaning uh, because they believe that East Asians have admixture from the Homo Denisova, the Denisovan man uh, who was kind of like a Neanderthal, but Asian, different. Uh, even without such admixture, East Asians will be found to have to share more alleles with Neanderthals. Okay, interesting. So East Asians also have Neanderthal ancestry even without Denisova. That's what he's trying to say. Right, because let's get into this. Uh, when they discovered that Europeans, I actually have like a bit less than 2% Neanderthal ancestry, according to my DNA test. And uh, East Asians on average have about 6% Homo Denisova uh, admixture. And then they concluded, therefore, that, ah, see, and because Central Africans did not have these introgressions, uh, they concluded that, therefore, the Central African Homo sapiens was like the real Homo sapiens, the pure Homo sapiens, who then moved into Europe and Asia. But this was not until uh, they discovered that uh, West Central Africans actually have up to 19% admixture from an archaic ghost ancestor, probably Homo erectus or Homo ergaster. So that means that's quite, that's quite extreme, actually. But it might explain so much. It would it would mean that uh, the Central African Homo sapiens is actually a bit more archaic than uh, the Homo sapiens in Europe uh, and Asia, suggesting that Homo sapiens came out of Eurasia into Africa, and that Africans were actually the last to become Homo sapiens rather than the first. So. Right. Right. But everything is probably part of your imagination. The question is, is there a collective imagination? And I think so. I think there are several collective imaginations out there, but they overlap largely now due to um, globalism. Um, for example, in the 1990s, most Arabs living in the desert still believed the earth was flat, whereas in the West we are taught the earth is round. So you have to imagine two entire, two very large groups of people believing completely different things who's to say who's right science says we're right they say they're right so who's right and that that is the whole point of the phenomenology is that you can only really believe what you can you know ultimately imagine or perceive now interestingly i myself have never been an astronaut so i've never seen with my own eyes that the earth is round i just have to take somebody's word for it right Right, I don't, I don't think so. I think many minds at the same time can exist. So there's not one mind, but many, all right? But it is an interesting thought experiment to say that only you exist here. Imagine if it is so. Imagine if only you exist and everything else is a projection of your own mind. Then your, your attitude toward that reality should be entirely different. Knowing that this is all projection I should not be afraid of anything anymore. Why am I still afraid of things then? I could just do whatever I want then. Why don't I? See, so what's holding me back then, right? So that's interesting. Very interesting thought, yeah. All right, I'm still reading this. Uh, let's see. Uh, AI was used to judge which of the typical synthetic skull images of different races was more distant from the archaic humans. This was deliberately done to be insensitive, and the AI gave a more objective answer. Okay, interesting. So AI is able to detect truths that human scientists would rather prefer to ignore, especially in the West. All right, let's see. Uh, Here's a quote by Alexander Solzhenitsyn. You can resolve to live your life with integrity. Let your credo be this. Let the lie come into the world. Let it even triumph, but not through me. Very interesting. Yeah. 
So the professor, Shi Huang, I'm, I'm looking at his Twitter channel. He posts some pictures here where you see like the average skull shape of, say, African-Americans and the average skull shape of uh, European-Americans. And it's different. Uh, the uh, African-Americans have a more pronounced uh, lower face. And also their skull is shaped differently. They have like a dent up top that white men don't have. So if you're a white man, you can feel your skull like this. It's like an arc, whereas African-American or black males, they have a little dent there. That's interesting. So there's so many features about us that are just totally different. This, this incessant claim that we are all equal and therefore we must be the same is nonsense. We are effectively 8 billion different individuals, uh, you know. Yeah, I watch Tucker Carlson sometimes, yeah. Europe was never savage. That's just propaganda. That's extremely racist propaganda. Anybody who says that is a racist. Europe was never savage. We need to be aware of this, that a lot of these people who come to live with us are actually extremely racist toward us, but we may not always recognize their language because it's new to us. We've never heard these kinds of insults before, but technically, if you say that Europeans were ever savage, that's just racism. That's just racism. They can't say that. They can't tell that to us. What are you talking about? The Bell Beaker culture, the Mesolithic hunter-gatherers, they weren't savage. They were civilized. They were social human beings, you know, with hearts and minds, so can't say that about us I think we need to push back a lot more and I I only became aware of a lot of the hatred from the brown and the black people through the comment sections on TikTok I never knew I never even knew how they really think about us but they're exposing themselves now right so now you can pick up on that and say okay wow you know it's far worse than I thought it was Right, so someone complains about uh, the term lived experiences, which apply only to yourself, of course, but not to others, uh, which is just relabeling of subjectivism and idealism. Yeah, okay. Well, I do support idealism. <laughs> but you know, the way I see it is, like I said, I think the physical reality is largely a mind. Say physics can be a mind of its own. I can't influence that, but it's still there. I have to deal with it. It was there before I was born and it will be there after I die. So I don't believe in this solipsism where I am the only person in existence. I don't believe that at all. I believe we are 8 billion different minds. I believe animals have their own minds. Perhaps plants and trees even have their own somewhat version of a mind. Collectively, perhaps. Perhaps a forest has a mind as well. The, the physics has a mind or is a mind. The laws of physics are maybe like a mind changing. And so I do believe everything has a mental origin. But um, I think... All these minds coming together don't mean that I can override them. I can't play God. I have to figure out what the others are doing, so to speak, so I can carve a path for myself. That's how I would see it. All right. So they find skulls in the... There's a Hofmeier skull from South Africa which has prognathism, which is that pronounced lower face, uh, while the upper cave skull from China does not have this. The out-of-Africa theory is a bubble based on suppressing discourse on open secrets. So he re the professor recently raised the issue of mid-facial prognathism, that's the pronounced face, you know, in Africans and African fossils to most scholars in the field, in both China and the West. All right. Very interesting. But of course, people don't like this discourse. No, why is it that Western civilization wants everyone to believe uh, in the uh, out of Africa theory, the universalist theory? Probably because of geopolitical reasons. See, so it's not even scientific. It's purely political for geopolitical reasons of power. Uh, as in the book 1984 by George Orwell, you have uh, Eurasia fighting Oceania, and Oceania includes da 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 Africa. They need the African men as soldiers to fight 
Russia and China. So it's purely geopolitical. So you can see how a lot of left-wing left -wing science is just informed by economic interests and is not scientific at all. It's just bogus, absolutely bogus. Hold on. Yeah, we have different bones, different skulls. Of course we have. Uh, there are like five large groups of races based on your skull shape. So it's the Caucasians, that's like white people, but includes also North Africans and Arabs and so on. Then there's like the Mongoloids or Asians. And then the, you know, the N-word people, you can't even say the word. Uh, Central Africanoid. Uh, that's not the word, but, you know, them, black people. And then there's uh, the Amerindians, the Native Americans, and probably also, I think, the Polynesians or the, you know, the Aborigines of Australia, the Oceania group. Five, so three big races and two small races. That's how the Europeans used to classify it. Um, in America, of course, in American English nowadays, you don't speak of the skull shapes. You, you <clears throat> Sorry, you speak of the skin tones, black, white, yellow, and red, which I think is bizarre especially because the word black overlaps with dark-skinned South Indians who are not African or with dark-skinned Australians who are not African and so on and so forth, you know. No, I'm not a fan of the Freemasons. Right, North Africans have the Caucasoid skull. They are, in fact, related genetically to the West Eurasians. Well, the theory, so the question is, can you speak again on Africans being the last to evolve? So the theory by this professor, uh, Shi Huang from California, he's Chinese, but he explains it as follows. In, according to his research, modern looking humans evolved in East Asia some 300,000 years ago and arrived to Europe already some 280,000 years ago or so. There's a skull that was found in a cave in Greece that has modern human features, and that skull is dated to be 280,000 years old. Whereas the modern humans in Africa only evolved there around, let's say, uh, 100,000 100, years ago. So, and they didn't come to Europe until 40,000 years ago. So yes, although it is true that there were modern humans out of Africa who came into Europe, but they died out. They did not leave their genetic traces among Europeans. So Europeans don't actually descend from humans out of Africa. Europeans are likely to descend from, as, a, as a mixture between hominids who were living in Europe mixed with uh, human so homo sapiens coming out of East Asia. So the out of Asia theory is likely the correct one. Uh, but Europeans, of course, have their own Look, we always simplify these stories, but it's much more complicated, of course, because there were hominids in Europe, different versions of Neanderthals, for example. The Northern European Neanderthals were different from the Southern European Neanderthals and so on. Even they had already a sort of racial differentiation. So, uh, and then there's Denisova and whoever, whatever archaic species were there. But the, the earliest skull found with modern European features was 280,000 years old found in Greece, and that was... Uh, representative of a ho early archaic Homo sapiens, uh, and the thing is that the African Homo sapiens didn't exist yet by then. African Homo sapiens didn't even start to evolve until around 170,000 years ago, and didn't even come out of Africa until 40,000 years ago. So that's why it's probably we got it in reverse. They tell us about the out of Africa theory spreading to Europe and Asia, but it's the other way around. It's actually modern humans came out of Eurasia and went into Africa. Right. So the first source of modern humans, they say now, was uh, East Asia, you know. And Cheddar Man is a hoax, man. Cheddar Man is a hoax. Don't believe that nonsense. How ideology threatens to corrupt science. Ideological censorship in science is antith antithetical to its purpose and its methods. Indeed, if you sub subdue science to your ideological beliefs, and it's not science anymore, then it's just politics. Politics by other means. Oh, the skull I was talking about, the one from Greece, it's called the Petralona skull, found by Professor Pulianos. And he believed that the skull was indeed modern human and is 280,000 years old, and that's like way older than the earliest 
uh, African Homo sapiens, which didn't even arise until around 180,000 years ago. Meaning behaviorally moral, yeah. So that's very interesting. Yeah, I like to take deep dives into these forbidden topics because this is where all the new thoughts are generated. This is where all the conclusion are, conclusions haven't been thought up yet, you know. We're still thinking, we're still figuring things out. And that's, I just feel attracted to that kind of thing, you know. All right. We're comparing. Yeah, it's interesting how the skulls of Africans, Central Africans, actually have that pronounced lower face that Asians and Europeans just largely don't have. The prognathism, prognathism, I don't know how to pronounce it. All right. Well, just watch the new Romeo and Juliet. Prognathism is what I mean with Juliet. Yeah, it's all very, you can take deep dives into this stuff. Uh, so you can read more about it, by the way, on my uh, on my Substack newsletter at uh, www.jmk.info. There you can find, uh, my recent article is also about this topic, so you can uh, read up a little more on it. Yeah, okay, this is infinitely interesting. I, I wish I took an interest in uh, the origins of humankind because as a child, there was a book about Lucy. Lucy is like uh, an ancient Homo erectus, I believe, hominid from Africa that they found there. Uh, yeah, I was always interested in this topic of where are we really from, you know? All right, so uh, I'm done with my uh, talk about uh, the origins of humanity because it's just too much for me to to discuss in a live show so maybe i'll just talk about uh, other things and see if uh if people have some comments for me and then i'll just go on with that yeah i love survive to jive as well but i think recently he's been pushing the idea that uh early germans were brown people or something i think he's taken the indo-european connection a bit too far indo-european is a bad name you might also have called them kelto tokarians which is also nonsense it's a linguistic reference and not an ethnic reference. The ethnic reference should simply be the steppe pastoralists who were obviously white people, all right? And some of them went to northern India, northwestern India, where they became the Aryan invasion, and the others went to Europe, where they mixed with the local Europeans who were already living there, who, who were also already white. You know, in terms of how black Europeans ever were, think of Catherine Zeta-Jones. She's from Wales, England, uh, Great Britain. Uh, and think of Sean Connery, the James Bond uh, character. Uh, they're quite dark-faced, actually. But not so they're darker than I am. Clearly, I'm a bit reddish right now because I got burned. But uh, that's that's how dark it gets when they when they present you a cheddar man who is like as as dark as brown shoe polish. That's total nonsense. Europeans never looked like that. Just never. No, she's not mixed. The Catherine Zeta Jones is a, what they call the Black Welsh. Again, the word black does not refer to African. It refers to the dark haired, black haired uh, Welsh people who were probably there before the Indo Aryan invasions, the Indo European invasions. Uh, but they have a white skin. You know, they, have, they can be very pale in the winter time, almost white in the winter. Um, but they turn very brown in the summer. Right? But brown, as in tanned, tanned white people, right? Not as in brown like shoe polish. No, absolutely not. All right. All right, they're half Irish, okay, but it's kind of the same Celtic stock, you know. Uh, people from Spain because they're Caucasian. Yes, they're all Caucasian because even Arabs are Caucasians. Yeah, North Africans are Caucasian, meaning they have the Caucasian skull shape. That's what it refers to, right? But of course, there's a big, big fat difference between, say, you know, the butter white people of Northern Europe and the, 
you know, the, the olive brown people of Southern Europe and then, you know, the somewhat Arabized uh, specimen of North Africa now, right? It's all very different. Things change. It's funny how we never talk about the Arab colonization of uh, Italy and Spain or something. We never talk about the Turkish colonization of Hungary, Greece, and Bulgaria. Bulgaria was uh, colonized by Turkey for 500 years. You know, we always talk about white colonialism, not the opposite, right? Uh, we, don't, we don't talk about the Arab slave trade in East Africa that they started, uh, you know. We don't talk about, you know, the, the slave trade of the, at the Barbary Coast in front, uh, north of Morocco as Moroccan pirates began stripping southern Italy, southern Spain of, uh, of its inhabitants, selling them off as slaves, white slaves. Yeah, we don't talk about the one or two million white slaves that were captured during the, the, the slave era. We never talk about these things because some, for some reason it's okay to make white people look bad, but we can never speak the truth about others who were doing equally bad things. All right. Yeah, Caucasian comes down to skull type. So some Ethiopians and so on and Somali, they can be like Semitic Caucasian, yeah. But obviously that doesn't mean we're the same people, all right? It's just about skull shape. I think Somali in general look really freakish to me. They look so weird, like Ayan Hirshi Ali is such a freak. No, I would never want to live among them. I was talking about uh, the origins of the human species, of the human races, yeah. Yeah, Somalis look weird, huh? Yeah. Yeah, Spain was colonized by Islamic Arabs, yeah, mixed with the Berbers, yeah. So the Berbers long ago used to be like white, pale, blonde. Uh, even some Germanic tribe, the Vandals, eventually settled in North Africa as well. So yeah, of course they got they got you know a good mixture there. All right, let's see how long have I been speaking. Gotta pop this out. Okay. A bit over 40 minutes okay i'll try to continue for a little bit more because i as i always say i try to fill an hour but i know uh, uh i wasn't there in early egypt no uh there's so many weird theories about egypt but it seems like uh the modern egyptians the coptic egyptians they are descendants of clearly caucasian people Aaron. Yeah, Al Pacino is probably Jewish, right? So it's like a lot of these so-called Italians in the American movies are just Jews. They're not Italians, you know. Uh, you know, a lot of Italians look perfectly normally European. They don't look odd at all. All right, let's see. I'm going to go to uh, Zero Hedge. Right, the German stock exchange boss slams the government saying the economy, economic policy is sheer catastrophe. Yeah, and migration policy is universally wrong. Wow, that's new. Like, so nobody's ever dared to say that in Germany. All right. Yeah, so basically German industry is collapsing. It's going to die. It's just for sure almost. Unless China scoops it up and purchases Germany, basically, which they might as well do. But in that case, you will see what is going to happen, right? Germany is going to side with BRICS, with Russia and China eventually, which is the best idea for Germany anyway. Germany has no benefit to stay with uh, the American NATO alliance, with the uh, Anglo-American, so to speak. It would not serve Germany at all. German industry needs to be linked up with Russian resources and the Chinese market. But the, the question is, who will be living in Germany? Will it be Germans living in Germany? All right. The 
46-year-old Weimer, who's, who has a bird's eye view of the German economy through his role as the boss of the largest stock exchange in the country, said that his talks with international investors gave him direct knowledge of their opinions on Germany. He noted that I know half of the stock exchange CEOs, I know bosses personally and on a first name basis, and I get around a lot. I don't want to spoil things tonight, but our reputation in the world has never been as bad as it is now. Exactly. He further laid on the criticism stating, you're just crazy, just crazy. What kind of government do you have there? You're well on the way to becoming a really outdated economy. Bingo. <laughs> the Germans are catching on, man. They're, if their highest economic people finally figure this out, you know, the truth is international investors say we only invest in Germany because you are so cheap. We have become a junk store. The speech was already held at April 17th, but only has become public now after the Economic Advisory Board posted it to YouTube. And he also noted that fundamentals no longer drive markets, but only speculation, momentum, and other factors, okay? Investors putting their money in German companies at the moment are only opportunistic and not investing for fundamentals. They also demand a risk premium when putting their money in Germany, okay? Basically, Germany's dead. Oh, and migration policy is completely wrong. Weimar also touched on the topic of migration, but his remarks were equally scathing there. He said he did not wish to get too political, but he could not help but say something in regards to the ruling left liberal government's migration policy, which he said was universally perceived as completely wrong. Our orientation towards do-gooderism is not shared anywhere. Bingo. You know, the do-goodery of the Western political system is not repeated anywhere else in the world. Do you think the Arabs or the Chinese or Africans are trying to make their countries more diverse? No, no, they're trying, they're trying to make Europe more diverse. They're trying to make the U.S. more diverse. Come on, you know. Uh, Poland has been captured by the U.S., right? So Poland's fucked now. They need, you need to throw out the Americans. For the mainland Europeans, our only best option is to throw out the Americans. The American influence here is simply catastrophically evil. It's not in our benefit in any way. We can't do this anymore. Every time Americans go to war in the Middle East, we have to absorb millions of the Muslim migrants, right? This can't go on. This is stupid. <laughs> Germany is so poor nowadays, they have to include pensions in their defense spending calculations. Okay. <laughs> Do you think that no one in the USA realizes what we're doing? This is madness. We have ammunition for one and a half or two days. Germany can't defend itself. And I think Putin already knows that. All right. You live in the USA, you think it will collapse? Yeah, so will Germany. The whole Western world is going to economically collapse for sure. And then the question is, what will... What will Europe do with its 700 million population? And the answer is we will probably have to link up with uh, Silk Road, China, and Russia. What other choices do we have? Or we can go totally berserk and go live off the grid in the sub-Arctic, which I'm going to do anyway. Or I'm going to plan helping people to do that anyway, uh, which is an alternative to build a new Hyperborea, basically. Right, right. The USA is the new Rome, yeah. A dead Rome. All right, I'm going to post this video to my uh, YouTube channel a bit later today, and then you can, you can review it there. Uh, and so, uh, no, Georgia and Armenia should not join Europe. Why? You know. This is getting nuts. Like Europe is playing empire and that's not going to end well. It's also going to collapse. You know? So anyway, uh, have, a, have a nice evening and uh, I'll see you, uh, see you some other time, right? Bye-bye.